2016 is not a great year, is it? I'd like to swear right now, but you're correct. Yeah, it's not been a good year. Well, I mean, most recently you've lost a job, you know, yeah. where, and your 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 son passed away mm -hmm. uh, earlier. In June. Uh, how do you deal with all this stuff? Oh, well, did we, I mention my mom passed away? And your mom passed ago? away. Yeah. yeah. You know, part of it when we lost McClaney, that was. Uh, Obviously, that's a thousand times worse than anything else, although losing Miss Virginia, his mom, has been pretty bad. But people kept writing us these amazing stories and, and kept telling us about the things that they had gone through and what they had learned and what they tried to do. And at the end of like literally 5,000 comments, yeah, something, something around that, I kept reading them over. I'd sit in McLean's <coughs> bed and cry and, read, and, and read them over and over again. And it's like they taught us how to be better people because they were so inescapably gracious and they were kind and they had already found their grace. You know, we were still in the like sobbing and crying and not knowing what to do stage, but they had already figured it out. And it was like, it, it was this amazing community of people that had already endured unimaginable loss and they helped us do the same thing. And I think, do you feel alone when that happens? I feel like you're the only person this has ever happened. Yeah, and, and I think as Aaron kept saying, read them. Go to Facebook, read the comments, read the comments. I don't want to. And then I started reading them, same thing. Yeah, and the cards Support, that people sent and right. yeah, the food. But, but they do, they teach you things that you, you, you didn't expect. And I guess the overwhelming thing is, is we're all in this together. Is there's a gigantic pool of suffering that is 2016. And for some reason, this is the year almost everybody drowned in it. But they all kept sharing the same stories. And in the end, when we posted about losing our job over at Rewind, and we finished with, we're all in this together. And if 2016 is sucking for you too, I hope you feel my arms around you because we get it. We get it now. Why are you no longer working? A, a, a sure. popular duo on local radio doing local stuff? Um, I Financing? Finances? Well, you have to get paid. Yes. Yeah. So there's always that. Someone has to pay you. And so I think it just comes down to they decided to make some changes and there was several people let go in our cluster uh, at Broadway Media. and. We were just two of them. So, I mean, you have fans, and you have followers, and you have yeah. people who, frankly, take you for granted every morning. Have you heard from them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, it, apparently so did uh, the station, because they turned off their Facebook page and a couple of other things, I guess, after the protest, but no. Oh, yeah, if you want to sign a petition, there's four of those, too. <laughs> Yeah, not no, no, that no. it's going to do no, any good, yeah. but yeah, it's nice. A position to get you back. Yeah. 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 Somewhere, somewhere else, I'm sure. But no, it is a shame. I loved that company. We both did. And we loved working there. It was a lot of fun. One of the most entertaining things I think we've ever done. So it's hard to lose that. But you know that in media, you can't control it. And sometimes it blindsides you, and it definitely did this time. And I think I felt vaguely foolish. Because can't you usually tell? Don't you usually see the signs when... Things are going pear-shaped for you. I don't know. If or are you just too darn successful? No, too no, darn no, no. Successful. Uh, well, I think you're too darn successful, which is what's confusing to me. I mean, uh, you, you have to pay, and there is money involved. But right. when you're successful, you bring, you generate your own money. We've always paid for ourselves. We've always had enough clients that we really, we've always paid for ourselves. We were always proud of that. So I'm not sure. I don't know what it was. We, it's like everything else that has happened this year. I don't know why it happened. But the point is, it just didn't happen to us. It happened to everybody. This is a horrible, a awful Is it because everybody's going to the internet? What's the deal? I mean, did you lose audience? Oh, as far as rate? Um, it, it has to do with their selling the show and other shows in the building. It has to do with um, your signal. It has to not making excuses. No, no, I'm, no, I'm just wondering uh, why. That's not excuses. It yeah. just has to do with content, which we felt very strong about, uh, and, and working with clients, which we feel very strong about and doing a real team job and they decided they're going to make some changes and some of the changes are big that are happening in the building with the six stations but we were just part of that and what are you going to do now i mean you must have given us it's a little bit shocking you know we used to do this endless joke of who would be stupid enough to get both of their paychecks from the same place oh that that'd be us yeah. so no we'd still we're still already <laughs> talking is, it, stupid idea if it's not funny don't make me laugh <laughs> right do it. <laughs> It's so horrible. We're talking to other GMs, and we're, we're obviously planning to get another job here in the market, but uh, we're also looking at a bunch of other things, too. Uh, I'm going to do more writing. I'll do more work online with our website and a bunch of other things. Todd wants to do Exotic a dancing. small business. You know. Oh, you'd be yeah. perfect for I that. I was, but mm -hmm. now 
Yeah, that loose change was really coming in handy at the house. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, you're, you seem fairly upbeat for all the things that have gone wrong, all yeah. the things that have gone south for mm. you this year? Well, it comes and goes. There's a good moment. So yeah. that's kind of different. You're inescapably happy, so that helps a lot. But right. no, it's, no, it is going to suck for a lot of, for years and years. We put on McClaney's pictures on our tree this year, and it was like one of the hardest things I've done because it's accepting that he's not here anymore. I can't um, imagine losing, it's not supposed to, not the way it's supposed to be. It's no. the parents are supposed to go first, not the children. But there's so many other mothers and fathers who have been through the same thing, and they talk to us about it, and it helps so much to have somebody, not just the usual platitudes, and everybody means well. I mean, 98% sure of everyone, what they say, no matter how awkward, is at least they try to reach out and say something. But the parents who said, you're going to feel this, and this is going to happen next, and then you're going to be really mad, and then you're going to want to start kicking the wall, and then this happens, those are the ones that you're grateful for, because they managed to come out of their grief long enough to tell you this is what's going to happen And you're not next. alone. Exactly. When things happen, you, you close up into yourself, you think you're alone. Well, if you you think, feel insane. You know, we, we have a social presence mm -hmm. on media, and if you don't have that, if you're not a personality of sorts, and you lose someone, you're in your house, and who is there? And you're just you. Just you're not an image anymore, yeah. it's you. Well, you need friends, you need people who understand you, a circle. But if you don't have the relationship we have with such a large p group of people, that person who's lost someone, they only have their family. They don't get that huge support that we got. And that made it, it has made it uh, easier, I think. But Some say too much publicity, too much invasion of privacy would be tough at a time like that. But no, not, well, for, not it, for you. It wasn't for us. I'm sure that for some people it has been, but it wasn't for us. We also can control a lot of it, but we didn't have to because it worked out. Everyone was incredibly kind, yeah. Uh, we we did, no we, trolls. We, yeah, we always joke that our stalkers wear pantsuits. <laughs> And, and it's they're, true. It's see, you haven't lost your sense of humor. Postmenopausal. Right? Yeah. And if we ever get kidnapped, it'll be a minivan. <laughs> and there's plenty of room for us, you know. See, folks, these yeah. people need to be back on the radio. Oh, They've yeah. not lost their wit, humor, yeah. or anything. We love you. Well, one thing we wanted to do if, is, I think, it always helps if you start refocusing somewhere else. And one of the things that's always been big for us are children on the autism spectrum because of our twins. They both have autism and seizure disorders. And um, we found out a few years ago that literally it's like one in five Utah kids have some sort of sensory disorder, like autism or ADHD or, uh, you know, there's a uh -huh. myriad of other problems. And I'm sure none of it has to do with the environment and all of the pollution and all the air quality issues. I'm sure none of that happens. It doesn't even matter Not where it all. comes from. It doesn't. You but just the, have it and the, you're dealing with it. The important thing is... is that and in your family as well, of course. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's a, like, I think there's a vision of a normal family that you have, and I'm probably sure you had it with your kids, you know, with Matt, and of like, my children will be this way, and this is what we do as a normal family. And when you have a child who has sensory issues, a lot of the normal family vision goes away. Like, you can't take them to the movies because they can't take the noise, or you can't take them here or there, or when you go over to your mom's for dinner, one of the kids is going to hide down in the basement because it's just too much. But you adjust. Mm -hmm. Always. But for one of, the, one of the things that's big for parents is that picture with Santa. They have this vision of getting the kids all dressed up and everyone's going to get a picture with Santa. But for kids on the spectrum, um, the, you can't go to a mall. There's all the moving escalators and the water features and the music and it's really loud and there's people talking and you're waiting in line and the Santa's bellowing. The kids totally melt down. They freak out. It's just too much. So you formed the Quiet Santa we program. We talked to Santa Claus mm -hmm. yes. because we talked to Santa Claus and we found out that he has talked to a bunch of moms and dads with kids on the spectrum and have all these different sensory um, situations. And he said he knows how to do it. Who said Santa? Santa, Santa did. Santa did. Of course he we did. We got this from Santa, Bill. Yes. Of course. So and, and what did Santa say? He said we're, uh, he puts he a child. He channeled this through you guys somehow yeah, in the course. Quiet Santa yeah. program. Yeah. We're not getting presents, but we're, you know, we're yeah. trying to work our way back in. Um, but basically he's going to have some of his time. He's going to clear it out. We're going to get some kids around the, uh, around, uh, the Wasatch Front to come in and actually get to sit with a very quiet Santa in a low lit room, no music blaring, and just just them and Santa and their family. And they get the picture with Santa, but more importantly, you get these kids who got to do it on their own time, in their own way. They get, didn't get thrown into it. Uh, they get to take a moment to be ready. And in the 
we've done this for four years now, and y you see children who haven't spoken like in six years, and they'll be talking to Santa. Or uh, there was one little guy, his mom was a single mom and just looked exhausted, and she was crying because he was melting down. She said, you said you wanted to see Santa. You said you did. And he was just freaking. You sure. could see it. Sure. So we all went and stood outside the Santa hut. It was like five below, and we're shivering. And Santa. And <laughs> tell it. Santa Claus um, I w was very frustrated because here's this child who's curled up in the corner and so um santa claus we watched uh he got down santa. on his in his hands and knees and slowly moved across the floor and made eye contact and sat there 15 minutes later they're having a conversation okay. how cool is that very cool now you don't have access to the broadcast airwaves. Right. So how will the Quiet Santa program be affected at all? We have you. you <laughs> we know. do have you, don't we? You with your Yeah, but vast... I look lousy in a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but fortunately you have a very vast audience and so maybe you can help us and we'll obviously do this on our social media. But if you don't mind sharing this with, with your audience, no, the fact all, that they can go to our Facebook page, we'll get people signed up, we give them appointments so they know when to come Facebook in. Facebook page is? Mm -hmm. It's just Todd and Aaron. Okay. And uh, that way we'll get everybody oh, signed up and, and everyone gets a spot. And we're still looking for a venue, a place to do it, because that kind of went away with the job. How about so, your house right here? Sure, why not? It's too noisy, trust oh, me. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, you're trust actually serious. Me. You're actually serious. We would I am serious. No, we would yeah. traumatize the children if they and were we've here. And we've done it at malls before they open. We've done them uh, at the, uh, the Children's uh, Museum downtown mm -hmm. before Empty it opened. restaurants and clubs. Yeah. yeah. It so, doesn't matter. It just needs yeah. to be a quiet space. You need a nice chair, a couple trees. This is the beginning of 2017. Yes, it Almost. is. Yes. Is, can yes. It, yes. Can nothing be worse than 2016? No, don't, 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 don't tempt the universe. <laughs> yeah, don't tempt really. the universe. You're doing that. It's, it's like Captain R Lieutenant Dan when he's screaming in the middle of Forrest Gump, you call this a storm? Yeah, but he's up don't, on the mass. But it didn't don't sink. tempt fate. Don't this tempt fate with more. But he didn't this, sink. This is true. This is true. So you're not going to sink in no. 2017. No. And I'm not tempting fates anymore, or whatever you call yeah. it. I hope not. No. no. We have, but we have three more weeks. Don't push it. Don't push That's it. Down, we're going to hide in the basement. We will check in with you next year, see what's happening. <laughs> okay. We would love that. <laughs> All right. If we say no, you know how it went. <laughs> Todd and Aaron, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bill.